Hello, everybody. It's Professor Rich, and today I have a video about using should in the past, present, and future. So, let's talk about this. Let's talk about should. Should being the strong form of the pronunciation. Normally, when you hear this in a sentence, the pronunciation will be should, a weak form. Uh, like, what should I do? What should I do? So, let's start with the one everyone knows, which is advice and recommendations. Probably the most common use of should. Now we can ask about ourself. Should I leave now? Yes, you should leave. <laughs> okay. What should I do tomorrow? What should I do tomorrow? So notice there we have an example in the present. Should I leave now? And then an example uh, for the future, really. What should I do tomorrow? What should I do next week? Okay. Um, remember with the word stress, in English we always stress negation. So if we take, yes, you should leave. Let's take the opposite. No, you shouldn't leave shouldn't. Notice the stress on shouldn't compared to should being weak. All right, so that's advice and recommendation, the one that everyone knows. Then we have expectation. So should is often used for expectation. Where are my keys? They should be here. They should be here. Where are my keys? Right, notice weak form, should, expectation, in the present, where are my keys? They should be here. Where's the bus? It should be here. No, no, no. Look at the timetable. It should arrive in five minutes. And then we have a future example. Look at the timetable. It should arrive in five minutes. All right. So expectation in the present and future. And then we have some slightly more complicated things. We've got regret in the past. I shouldn't have shouted at her. I should have bought a better present for her. Right? So regret about something I've done, talking about my own actions. And we also have criticism. Criticism of someone else. You shouldn't have shouted at her. Right? You should have bought her a better present. The government shouldn't have raised taxes. Okay? So notice these are all in the past and it's past regret and past criticism. All right. And you can see the form there. Should plus have plus past participle. A common way with modal verbs to access the past is to put have and then the past participle, right? Um, and then we have another one, which is the least common, perhaps, of everything we talked about. And this is the formal conditional, where should becomes a replacement for if, and it makes a formal style conditional sentence. Should you have the chance, please do try the champagne, right? Should it be possible, we shall come to the party, all right, or something like that. So you have these formal conditionals. Basically, you use should in place of if, and you can use that in all the conditionals, the zero, um, the, the first, the second, the third, okay? Should it rain, I always take an umbrella, right? There's a, a zero conditional. All right, so there you go, folks. That's your little quick but comprehensive video on how to use how to use that lovely modal modal verb should in in English. Thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe and share and do all that stuff. And also check out the live streams. We do live streams now on this channel. You can go youtube.com slash professor reach and you can see the live stream schedule. Um, these are live classes, live interaction and I answer any and all questions that are asked. 
as long as they comply with the YouTube terms and services. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Catch you later.